So this video will be over a kit I already built again. This is a LA-5FN uh, Soviet fighter. Uh, this is a, one of their, a pretty good fighter that they had in World War II. Uh, I had never heard of it before, even though I heard of the MiGs and the SUs and stuff, but I never heard of the LA-5s. But it, it's a pretty cool looking fighter, and it's a pretty good kit too. So we'll go over it, and please like and subscribe to my channel, and click that bell so you can get uh, notifications when I upload new videos. Uh, thanks for watching. So here we have the kit instructions for the LA-5. This is probably one of the best fighters they had in World War II, especially the, the FN. The earlier versions had problems, but then they, they upgraded it, and you can see, you can, uh, you can build it. It has, uh, of course, the gear up and gear down options. Most, most fighters have that, but this also has where you can leave the engine compartment and the guns open, which I did. Um, it has a couple, it shows here the versions, so or so. And uh, it had really good interior detail, I thought. The engine compartment was good detail, as well as the cockpit. These new, newer Zvesta kits are, are, are pretty good. <clears throat> Here we can see some of here is the, the whole engines. Yeah, I like it better when these pieces, these are uh, it's the coil for the for the spark plugs. <clears throat> but uh, I've seen some kits where they come as a photo etched, and, and I find that better because you can they fit better. You can bend them o over a little so they connect. Sometimes the plastic doesn't connect exactly right. I didn't have so many problems on this one. You see different, the different exhaust here as well. <clears throat> it's a really good kit. It comes with decals for two versions. You have a 5th Guard Fighter Regiment, 11th Fighter Division in Ukraine, 1944. Or the, the 1st Guard Fighter Regiment in Spring 1944. And the aircraft <clears throat> turned out pretty well, except for these decals here, because they overlap each other, and that doesn't ever work out very well. It should be, you know, it, it works out a lot better if it's one piece, but that's the way it was, and it turned out okay. But you can see where the decals overlap. And I tried and tried and tried. I couldn't get all the bubbles out of it. So here's the guns. They're about a 50 caliber, I believe. The engine looks pretty nice, I think. I could have dirtied it up more. I rusted up the exhaust port manifolds there. But I left the uh, pistons and such uh, pretty clean. Here in the front, you can see some detail there. That's like the... I'm not exactly sure what those are. But I just noticed I didn't, cut a, didn't clean up that part right there very well. I can do that still with my X-Acto. I never noticed it until now. Uh, otherwise, it looks pretty good. I probably should start adding wires up here. I have the stuff for it now. But I never really worried about it that much. It's a nice looking kit. <coughs> I use Revell color for it. Underside is the... It's the same color that I use for the German uh, underside even though it should be a little a little different but um, it's hard to find these colors really on top is AMT uh, AMT 11 medium gray I use the model master for that and this is Revell 57 the darker color and cockpit I use uh, 
Ravel 45, which is like a, a faded olive almost, which you can't really tell anyways. But the cockpit looks pretty good. These Vesta models, I definitely recommend the newer ones. The older ones were also not that bad. There wasn't, they were simple, there wasn't a lot of detail, and the tracks were a pain because it was hard plastic and they were hard, hard to work with, really. I mean, they were single piece hard plastic, and uh, it just kind of. I built quite a few of them. My BMP, a lot of the Russian tanks I have, they're all older Svesta kits from the 90s at least. And they all turned out pretty well. But the newer ones are a lot better. And these, oh, here, look. When you look at the front. That's always a cannon there. In the um, propeller hub. I'm not sure, it's probably a 20 millimeter. It's what they use a lot in these days. I think they moved up to 30 millimeter sometimes too. But all in all, it's a nice aircraft. Nice build. Definitely recommend this for anybody that's a fan of World War II fighters. So thanks for watching and until next time.